Starting outside today, got two gorgeous E-types out front of the shop. Series 2 coupe in my own 1967 with the junk E-type motor. Still running strong, glad to report, no issues. Just got it out of storage and what a great cruiser this is to and from the shop every day. But yeah, let's get inside and do some work. Back on the XK150. Hopefully we'll get back to this motor. Still waiting on cam sprockets. Get all the timing gear here on this side of the motor. And the main event today is brakes. Here we are, we got a lot of stuff going on here. Front and center are the rear brakes. So we upgraded. Here's the old caliper carrier for the round pad style. And Stewart at Coventry Auto Components gave me the newer style, the slide in style. These are much easier to work on. Got the new pads here. The new wheel cylinders looking really nice. In gold CAD there, the Dunlop wheel cylinders. And I redid the handbrake hardware here on Cadmium. This is gonna look spectacular. All the hardware, the new pads to put on from SG Barrett. Thanks, guys. And then behind here is the kit from Coventry Auto Components. You can see they provide a lot of stuff here. So I think that's gonna be pretty helpful having a lot of these lines pre-made. But just in case, I have the flaring tool here. Yeah, we can make any line that we need. Got the unions here. I'm gonna reuse the old unions because Stuart, yeah, these aren't quite the same. And the flares are slightly different inside. So I'm gonna stick with the old ones. Got a new brake light switch here. You can see the old style. I can't believe the old one was still working in there, that old rubber diaphragm and that brake light switch. So we're gonna put a new one on, refresh that. Got a lot of stuff in boxes here. The brake booster servo, the front calipers. Yeah, we got a lot to do. Let's get started. Let's put together these rear brake calipers. Okay, I wanna put the rear calipers back together. I'm super gonna enjoy this. It's not often you get to do this because many times in the restorations, this stuff just gets painted as an assembly and not taken apart. There's just not enough budget to actually do the job right like we see here. So I gotta assemble the handbrake mechanism. You can see the handbrake levers here and I gotta first put the pads onto the levers. So let's do that. Okay, I got both the pads on there, arms there. And now I need to attach the adjusting mechanism. This wood. Okay, the handbrake mechanism's done. You can kind of see the lever here. It tugs on the pin and pushes the pads together when the handbrake's used. Pretty simple. Got to attach it now to the caliper carrier down here. The lever will go on the same side it's mounted. So it'll go in here like this. I have brand new pins here to stick in there. Uh, these are very tight. They go in there, so I want to use a lot of anti-seize and maybe even I'll put some penetrant down in there to try to stop them from seizing up, which can happen. These new pins have a bit of a shoulder, so they stick kind of proud on there, which I think is fine. Next up, time to put the piston assembly calipers on either side of the carrier. Uh, these are exactly the same piece. And what I want to do is just loosely attach them so I can bend my line that
That's okay. I mean, a little bit of bend in there, but sure makes the job a lot faster. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Just bent these by hand. Um, I think it'll work just fine. I probably could have made a better job if I had a slightly tighter and smaller pipe bender, but this is gonna work just fine. Now I wanna mount these calipers properly onto the carrier. And there's a couple ways to do this. One is to drill some holes through these special uh, bolts. They're actually a, kind of a funny um, undersized head bolt. And sometimes you'll see them with holes in them to run lock wire from one to the other. Myself, I'm just gonna put them in with red Loctite. That means I have to clean the threads because Loctite doesn't work if there's grease on the threads. So I'm gonna let those dry put on some Loctite and seal this all up. Okay, all set, ready to put these caliper assemblies back on the car. And you know, is it too much to say that these are a work of art? You know, I kind of really do appreciate the engineering and respect the Dunlop engineers and what they were doing back in the time. Fitting disc brakes on the back of a 1957 car, I think that's bloody brilliant. And here we are not over embellishing the car, putting some sort of modern system on here that doesn't belong, not trying to make Mona Lisa smile a little bigger. You know what I mean? I really love this stuff just shining at me here. And uh, yeah, this is the kind of restoration work I really like, just respecting the history, the engineering, and the thought process behind the car as it was made in 1957. Does that make sense? What do you guys think? Okay, let's put these rear brakes on. I have to respect the spacing. I have some shims here. I wanna make sure that this, these calipers and this carrier is totally centered over the rotor. Holy, those look nice on there, don't they? Incidentally, this is actually the exact same setup as a Ferrari 250 GT. Look at that, rear brakes are in, got all the lines fitted. And one thing I had to make sure is that the caliper was centered over the rotor. It goes in with shims and Jaguar doesn't have much tolerance there for any discrepancy on either side. Now I spent this afternoon really fitting the brake lines here and I've been using the kit from Stuart at Auto Coventry Components and I've had a little bit of issues. It wasn't all the way there. For instance, on the driver's side, what they called the near side, my line wasn't long enough to wrap around like it did from the factory, which isn't such a big deal. But then I found a lot of my other lines were just too long and I needed to trim them, which is no big deal if you have a flaring kit, but if you didn't, man, you'd be stuck. And I wasn't able to use the unions or the copper washers. So I think really, you know, it's a great idea to have a bag with everything you need for the whole brake system, but just needs a slightly more accurate execution and it'll be all the way there. Another issue I came into was with this fuel line. See this big fuel line running in here? Well, the fittings that went to the fuel pump had the threads all the way down. They wouldn't seat and that wasn't gonna work. So just need to really be observant, especially when putting together brake and fuel systems because we don't want leaks and it's a safety item. So the rear brake system's all in and tight, happy with that installation. Now I can move to the front and I have a lot of cool kits to show everybody here before they go on the car. Front and center are these calipers. Have a look at these, anodized aluminum, four piston calipers, they bolt right on. Uh, I think this is a great upgrade for NEXK. 
you can see what it replaces here. You can see the caliper carrier with the round pad. We're going to a more, more modern pad here from Mintex. And I got these from S&G Barrett. You can see the part number here. And I have the original mounting bolts all plated here too. I love this kind of stuff. These bolts. Now this is gonna work in concert with this brand new brake servo booster unit from Liberty Vehicle Technologies 920E here. And these guys are fantastic. They still produce a lot of the same hydraulic pieces under the license from Lockheed. And they provide us with a lot of our E-type components. So I can rely on really good quality pieces going into this XK with 920E. And they're pretty fussy. They say even if I cut one of these lines, I have to clean it all out and make sure there's no debris in the system to protect these expensive components. And that makes a lot of sense. Gotta be as clean as possible when putting together hydraulic systems. I'm gonna persevere with Stewart's, Stewart's uh, kit here, Coventry Auto Components, these copper lines. Uh, I like how flexible these lines are, and he's giving me the flex lines and all the clips, so that, I think that's super helpful. And the last thing I'll talk about here is the master cylinder. I had a look down the cylinder there. I'll show you what that looks like, and there's a bit of rust, so I'm gonna get a new one in, but I'm just gonna use this to help fit my lines. Uh, let's start getting this on the car. Okay, I'll show you guys a bit of my thought process here. I can really mount this brake booster anywhere I want in this upper inner fender area. So I fit the lines up and roughly get them in place. One of my pet peeves are lines that aren't bent very nicely. So I'm kind of anal about getting them really correct and just putting this booster in a nice spot to mount it and thinking about my routing here. You also have to respect that there's a splash channel going up in here. Like so. So I'll probably put some rubber around the lines right there. But I think I got a good plan here. There's a small clip that holds this to the bodywork right here. So I think I got a plan now. Well, that took a lot of patience getting that brake booster servo unit on top of the battery box here. Yeah, there was a six volt battery originally on this car on both the passenger side and the driver's side. Now this thing went in pretty tight. There wasn't a lot of room to move around. So I wanted to make sure all my lines and nothing conflicted before I solidified the position because I could have mounted this any which way. And I needed to make sure I had room to reach these holes so I can get the brake reservoirs in. Now the eagle-eyed viewers will notice one of these is actually a steel line. That's because I had this all this installed and that line was too short, so I had to remake it. And I have to say, if you're doing all the brake lines on an XK, start with this booster and everything else will be a piece of cake. Yeah, it's pretty challenging to get this all right. You can see the splash shield way back in there with the rubber foam in there, sealing it up nicely. And what else can I say? Yeah, I got the original clip here and the original bolt. I geek out on stuff like that. And while I was working in here, I noticed some stuff. You can see the way the fender is in two pieces here, the original welds in here. And actually you can kind of see the spot welds there running around where the headlight pod is spot welded to the fender. Pretty cool original touches. Okay, let's do something a little easier now. Okay, time to do the front brakes. Yeah, I'm putting on these big four-pot calipers. I know this kind of goes against what I was saying about keeping the car original, but this is what the customer wanted, and I'm not building this car for myself, and I think this is uh, one of the very best upgrades if you're gonna upgrade an XK. Now, when I tried to fit these two episodes ago, there was a discrepancy. I wasn't able to center them, and what I did was I put my pads, here, I'll show you the pads, in the milling machine, and very accurately took off my amount you probably can't see it there so that was my solution frank s g barrett was a lot of help with this he didn't want me machining the inside surface here i didn't want to machine the car so the only thing left was to do the pads and take them down some thousandths i don't think it's a big deal i think it's a great solution so let's put them on now i have my line already on here just loose it's always easier to get it started before you attach everything on. So just winding that line on. Hey, my bolts.
Look at that, got those four piston calipers fully installed. I think this is a pretty cool upgrade. Now this XK is gonna stop even better than my E-Type. And being aluminum, lots less unsprung weight. There are a lot of advantages to this modern system. And I guess one step further would be to get a slightly larger caliper and go to vented rotors. I think that's a little overkill, but you know, where do you stop? How far do you go? How much do you change the car? You know, that's up to every individual owner to decide themselves. And I'll just let you guys peer into my brake line routing here. You can see the union there coming in from the booster and the way it spreads the lines uh, to the near side, the off side and the rear. Okay, in my last video, I was really geared up to put all the new timing gear into the XK motor. Got the all new sprockets here. You can see one of them right here on the carrier. And yeah, the, the sprockets and teeth that were on there had a bit of a line cut into the side there, which meant that they needed to be replaced. But again, slightly frustrating. One of my new camshaft sprockets didn't fit the assembly. So here we go, let's try this again. Come on, come on. Let's see if it fits. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, there we go. It's tight, but it works. Okay, we're off to the races. All right, time to assemble the timing gear, the sprockets and the assembly. We got five new sprockets here. They were well worn out on the original car. And so here we go, we're renewing it all. Actually, the one you don't see here is on the crankshaft already. Now it all starts with the intermediary sprocket that sends the power from the lower timing chain crankshaft to the upper timing chain and the camshafts. And this works in concert with another piece of assembly here. There's an eccentric cam in here. I have assembly lube all over this. The idler cam goes on here, then I have a stop here. You can see the motion here. It moves um, the idler gear up and down to provide the right tension on the upper timing chain, kind of a neat adjustable system. So now I gotta get everything all ready to go here because it's quite a compact unit and you can't, it all has to go together in a certain way. So I'll start with the upper timing chain. It's actually the longer of the two chains. And I'll wrap it around the intermediary sprocket. Then I get my idler sprocket. I'll just have it sitting in here like so. Then I gotta get my lower sprocket. It'll wrap around the intermediary sprocket. Now we're ready to go. I take the other half of the assembly and drop it down on top. Make sure everything's lined up. It's a little finicky. There we are. Okay, I'll just put the camshaft sprockets in place here. This is kind of a fussy job. Oh, come on. There we are. Just gonna give this one last little wash in here. Always wanna be really clean when building motors and engines. Let that dry off. Up to the intermediary sprocket gear, it has a bit of a dowel area in here, so I'm just gonna put some lube to help it out initially. So you have to run the engine for quite some time before this area gets lubed. So I positioned the camera quite low because all this timing gear really sits in the cylinder head. It's way up there. I gotta get it around the sprocket here on the crankshaft. That's where this system gets all of its power. Now here we are. Now there's these four bolts here that'll tighten to the block and fix this assembly to the block permanently. See how low it sits? It's way down here, way up high in the engine. This is why you need a power bulge and an E-type. Okay, before I get too far ahead of myself, I wanna get this secondary damper on here. This is only fitted to later cars. I 
think it's a good idea just to get it in before I tighten everything down. Man, it's tight in there. Holy, look at that one. Somebody previously put a slot in these uh, bolts to make, I guess, to make a installation here. It makes this a lot easier. I'm trying to get a socket down in there. And this will be adjusted. It has some room for adjustment. See, so once the tensioner's in there, we'll be able to tighten that down in the appropriate location. All right, we're here at the bottom end, dealing with the bottom chain and the tension on it. So we've got to put the hydraulic tensioner in. Now the hydraulic tensioner, this is oil pressure here, right here in the hole, and there's a small fitting with a tiny little hole in there. If you don't get this set up right, guess how much oil pressure you end up with? Not a lot. And I gotta put the guide down here as well. And now this has a spring that's released on a ratchet system. So I can pull this piece of plastic out, push it in, and the hydraulic tensioner will be ready to go. Now on this side, have an adjustable guide, upgraded from Rob Beer Racing. This is kind of tight to get in there. So you get the idea, I'll put this guide in right, take out the red thing, the red stop, push it in, now this will be released. All right, got the guides in here. They're not really impeding where the chain goes, just helping it along. And we're gonna flip the motor over now and put the timing cover on. All right, I'm just loving this new chain sprockets, tensioner guides, oil pump. It's all coming together quite nicely here. And we're going to cover it up with the towing cover. Just want to put a little bit of light oil on what they call the distance piece. This is the, where the oil seal runs. Let's go grab that cover and put it on. Okay, here's a timing cover. The trick is to put it on at the same time with the seal down around the crankshaft. Timing covers on. Next, I want to do the frost plugs, freeze plugs, Welsh core plugs, whatever you want to call them before I paint the block. And I'm going to put them in with sealant because it isn't exactly the best mating surface and I don't just trust the metal sandwich. So let's put these in. Okay, I got this Forma gasket. It's kind of like an aviation, copy of an aviation sealant. There it goes. Time to seal up the bottom end of the engine. Got the oil pan here, it's a steel oil pan. A lot of XKs have aluminum oil pans. I kind of prefer the aluminum because these steel ones have to be a hot tank. There's no real way to clean them off. They can't be blasted, so uh, a little more difficult to deal with and not as pretty, but you know, it does the job. Got the hardware here to mount it. The original bolts, washers, love that kind of stuff. Got a brand new county water pump. Just painted that black and got the original hardware for that. Some assorted nuts and bolts and distributor clamp to go on the block. Now the block's changed a lot since you saw it last. I painted it with a urethane coat of black paint. Nice shiny paint. This is really what I prefer. Um, you can still actually see the oil leaks on this, believe it or not. And I just give it a thin coat of black paint. You can still see all the details. And yeah, it's not really hiding anything. Okay, well, let's get this together. 
Yeah, I'm trying to conceal my silicone habit here. Don't look, guys. Don't look. Got that water pump installed. Before I forget, there's two lubrication points. One right at the top here to lubricate the bearing of the pump. And one right here to lubricate the intermediate sprocket. Next up, I wanna put the oil pan on the bottom of the engine here. And it has a funny cork seal, a cork seal strip that I need to put adhesive on and make sure it stays in place. Drew a line on there to get it all lined up. There we are. <laughs> Don't wait for that to tack up. Yeah, let's put the oil pan on. You can see the baffles are all built in here. No easy way to clean this thing out. And one thing I had to do, sorry you can't see it, is I had to file the flange surface. It was raised around every bolt head. People tend to over tighten these things, these steel ones, in an attempt to cure oil leaks. See you later. Look at that, got that oil pan on, gleaming at me, and I got all 26 bolts fastened down all the way around. Yeah, a little bit of overkill, but also some eye candy as well. And I still have a little bit more work to do on the bottom end. For instance, the oil filter adapter isn't on yet, and then return down to the bottom of the pan. But for the most part, the bottom end is done. And that really concludes this episode of the XK150 project. But oh boy, do we have a lot more in store. For instance, I have the cylinder head completely redone. So we'll reveal that in the next episode. See what machining was done. Put the valves in there. And yeah, we're going to put all the glass in the greenhouse. Jason at Jetstream gave me a really good tip. Put this seal in and train it before we begin to put the glass in. So I'll have that sitting there over the weekend. And I gotta wonder about these A-posts too. I wonder, is there upholstery on here? Cause I gotta get it on now before we put the glass in. All right, well that does it for this episode of the XK150 Project. As always, if you have any tips, tricks, comments, or trade secrets, I love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Well, that's it. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.